so today I thought I'd review all of my Then I Met You brand products. Uh, several of you guys have asked for me to review it finally, so I was hesitant to review it because how expensive they, they are. Um, but I thought I'd just do one video, all the products, except for the new mask they came out with. I'll talk about that at the very end of this. Um, yeah, so I didn't dedicate a whole week of videos for every single product, but instead do them all here and I'll do timestamps so you can check those out. Um, anyway, so, um, okay, I'm going to start with their Birch Milk Refining Toner, which retails for $32. Uh, it's a toner. They recommend it for daily use. It does more than hydrate your skin. It has an optimal balance of lactic, glycolic, and glucolactone. Keeps your skin hydrated while smoothing out fine lines and preventing breakouts. Um, in my opinion, I, I thought I'd come up with a nice alternative for each of these products that's more affordable. So my uh, affordable alternative to this one is the Peach and Lily Good Acids Pore Toner. I think that one's $22 or $32. Uh, $22. So it's a little bit more affordable, similar ingredient list, just a little bit more uh, budget friendly or friendly for people that can't get this brand where they live. Um, this does not contain denatured alcohol. It does contain fragrance. So for the fragrance, we've got wintergreen extract and Rosa Damascena flower water. Uh, the scent of this is not super strong, but it is noticeable. Um, in terms of beneficial ingredients, we've got tree sap, sodium hyaluronate, Glycolic acid, lactic acid, squalane, shea butter, marshmallow, uh, glucolactone, trehalose, and olive oil. Um, then in terms of acneogenic ingredients for this one, we've got squalane and olive fruit oil. And I'm going to do a quick pH test. They mentioned the pH of this is 4. So we'll see, just to double check it. Because for some of those exfoliating ingredients, you want them you generally to be between 3 and 4. So let's see on the pH strip. I would say this does fit in pretty close to four, like they mentioned. So it's just up the upper range for exfoliation. I found this to be gentle, except for the fragrance. Um, I found it to be okay. I, I didn't love it. I didn't have any miracles with it. It's a nice, decent, slightly gentle toner. Uh, for a toner to be truly gentle, I expect it to be fragrance free though. So uh, this one's decent. I'll probably finish it. Would I repurchase this one? Probably not. It's pricey. So there we go for the verdict for that one. Uh, next up, I'm going to talk about the Giving Essence. So they call it a silky treatment essence designed with over 80% naturally fermented ingredients that couple with polyglutamic acid to deeply hydrate and retain moisture in your skin. Uh, they call they say its natural pink hue is derived from a powerful cocktail of antioxidant, red algae, and berries. It's not necessarily true because uh, they do have a specific ingredient that is used as a colorant in products, and that's called Gardenia Jasminosides Fruit Extract. So they say the color comes from all these berries, which it could, but they also use an ingredient which primarily is a colorant to give things a pink color. So it's kind of a little bit misleading there, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, so they say it unveils a luminous complexion. I say an affordable alternative to this one, in my opinion, is the Tony Moly Vital Vita 12 Moisture Ampule. Uh, a couple years ago, they came out with these different ampules in different colors, and that is a similar product to this one. I think it's like 60% similar, so it's not totally identical. Um, the ingredients of this one also kind of seem similar, the Paula's Choice Berry Serum with all the berries in here. So uh, no fragrance ingredients in this one, no denatured alcohol. Beneficial ingredients, we've got Galactomyces Ferment, Asparilagus ferment, Saccharomyces ferment, we've got niacinamide, aloe, black chokeberry, polyglutamic acid, algae, sodium hyaluronate, mulberry, lantern, holy basil, black currant, uh, turmeric, raspberry, betaine, bilberry, macay fruit, acai, blueberry, aloe, eggplant, neem, and purslane. So I'll try and post as much of this in the description as I can. Uh, the nice thing is in terms of acneogenic ingredients, there are none of those to note. And I'll do a quick pH test of this one. They say the pH of this is five. So there we go. I wish all brands would do a pH, put the pH on the product because it'd be nice to know. And then as things get older, the pH might change a little bit. So you can also tell there. I'd say the pH is five exactly. So there we go with that. Um, so in my opinion, it's a nice essence, probably my favorite product from then I met you, but also the most expensive one at $50 for a little three ounce bottle, 3.3 ounces. So it does have some good ingredients, no fragrance in it, which is great. Uh, lots of good berries, nice brightening ingredient, hydrating, and some good antioxidants in there. So 
It's a good product, but again, expensive. And that's not gonna change as I continue. Okay, so next up I've got the Calming Tide Gel Cream. So they call us a light as air skincare experience. Infused with our signature tri tide peptide complex, provides gentle hydration for supple and firm skin. Their innovative gel cream texture is thoughtfully designed to be a burst of lightweight moisture and perfect to complement our cocktail of skin fortifying ceramides, brightening niacinamide, and calming hibiscus plant extract. I bet the people that write these marketings get paid a lot. That's a lot of good words. A burst, calming, light as air. I should do that job. Okay, so uh, for this one, an affordable alternative is the Purito, Purito Centella Unscented Recovery Cream. Uh, also the D'Alba Piedmont No Sebum Repair Cream, which does have a little bit of fragrance in it. Um, okay, so this one, no denatured alcohol in here. This one does have fragrance in it uh, from bergamot oil as well as hibiscus extract. Bergamot oil is the bigger one. A lot of skin can be very sensitive to that. It seemed like two or three years ago, every K-Beauty product had bergamot oil in it. And now it's, I'm starting to notice it's not as showing up as much. So that's nice. Uh, in terms of beneficial ingredients, we've got niacinamide, ceramide. We've got uh, several peptides, matocaside. There we go. Uh, adenosine, betaine. So it does have a nice light texture. Uh, probably this is probably more geared towards oilier skin than dry skin because I don't find this to be hydrating enough even in my morning routine. Um, in terms of acneogenic ingredients for this one, we've got carbamur, nothing else, that's it. Uh, really do like the texture of this, um, but not hydrating enough for my dry skin even in my morning routine. If I use this under another thicker moisturizer or over a nice really hydrating serum, I can make it work, but I also didn't find this to be very calming and I didn't find it to help with redness either. So, I mean, I put it on my hand still feels dry. So I didn't love this one for $42. It's a lot of money for something that's average. So, although a lot of people like it. So I don't like the fact that you can't stand the stupid thing up though. Cause when it's laying down, it takes up twice as much space on my countertop, which is full. Okay, next up, we've got the Soothing Tea Cleansing Gel, which retails for $36. It's all very expensive, and it's never on sale. So uh, they call this their best product for cleaning, cleaning your skin. It cleans deep and removes every dirt settling on your skin, leaving it soft and supple. Uh, an affordable, fragrance-free version of to, alternative to these, the Pixie Clarity Cleanser, which is fragrance-free, or the Peach and Lily Power Calm Cleanser, which are both uh, more affordable in this one as well. Um, this one does contain tea butyl alcohol. It's near the end of the ingredient list, nothing to be concerned about. Um, and it does contain tangerine peel oil for fragrance. It's a rinse off product, so it's not as big of an issue, but it's still something to note for very sensitive skin. Uh, in terms of beneficial ingredients, we've got sorbitol, tea tree, licorice root, willow, bo willow bark, sodium hyaluronate, of course, cocoa extract, centella, green tea, panthenol, and glucolactone. No acneogenic ingredients, so that's always nice. Um, it's a decent cleanser. I would use it much more if it didn't contain fragrance because I just prefer to go fragrance-free, although I didn't have any issues with it. I just don't enjoy the scent. But uh, it does do a good job. It leaves your skin feeling clean but not stripped or too dry. It On its own, it's not enough to remove makeup or sunscreen so you really will want to use this with another cleanser preferably for them their cleansing balm so i'll get into that one next but a uh, decent first step cleanser okay so next up we've got the living cleansing balm which retails for 38 dollars, which is expensive but they give you a cute little spatula which says glow deeper you just spent 38 dollars on this uh, I will say I look creepy when I use this because it's very yellow. I'd leave this thing on. It's very yellow and your whole face looks bright yellow when you smooth it over. But uh, they call this a oil cleanser, combines a lightweight blend of grapeseed, olive oil, and sea berry oils. Hints of rosemary and persimmon and grapefruit make this sens sensorial aromatic experience designed to delight your senses and leave your skin soft and clean. Uh, so for me, an affordable alternative to this is the Samuel Jordan Samuel After Show Treatment Cleanser. And another alternative is the Hand Skin uh, line of cleansing oils. They've got several different ones. 
Um, this does contain fragrance from grapefruit peel oil, rosewood oil, and rosemary oil, although it's a rinse off product, so it's not as big of a deal as if it were a leave on product. Uh, the beneficial ingredients in this one, olive oil, grapeseed oil, sea buckthorn oil, babassu oil, vitamin E. Um, and then in terms of acneogenic ingredients, we've got olive oil and oribignia oleifera seed oil. This one does a great job removing makeup, sunscreen, everything. It does a great job removing everything. There are some cleansers that do a decent job but struggle. This does not struggle at all. It removes everything. And I use some stubborn uh, eyeshadow sticks. Removes them all. Does a great job with it. I cannot, cannot fault them at all. Uh, it does a great job removing everything. Sunscreen, makeup, mascara. Without leaving your skin feeling dry, it doesn't bother my eyes. You will probably want to follow this up with a second step cleanser. For them, preferably their tea cleanser because um, it does have a tendency of a little bit of residue, but does a great job removing most things on your skin. So it would be better if it were fragrance free though. But I like that it doesn't leave a film over my eyes. A lot of cleansers leave that film and you look blurry for a while. Everything looks blurry for a while and this does not do that, so. Okay, next up we've got their Honeydew Lip Mask. It's, they call it Nourishing Ultra Hydrating Lip Mask. A uh, good alternative to this one is the Tarte Sea Jelly Glaze Lip Mask, which I also like. Uh, no denatured alcohol. This does contain fragrance or aroma. It's not terrible. I don't mind fragrance as much in my lip products. Um, so this one's nice. Uh, we've got synthetic wax, melon fruit, sodium hyaluronate, avocado oil, squalane, lactic acid, vitamin E, olive fruit oil, sodium ascorbyl phosphate, which is a vitamin C derivative, uh, and then honey. So I like this. It's a nice lip product. It's hydrating. I wish it were a little thicker, especially if they call it a lip mask. For lip mask, I think of something that's super thick. You apply before you go to bed and rinse it off when you wake up. Uh, this one soaks in after a few hours, so I do find myself reapplying it, which is fine. It's not a big deal, but something a little bit thicker might be a little bit better, but anyway. And it's $22. Uh, then let me talk about their last ingredient. They re recently released a rose resurfacing mask for $56. Um, it contains fragrance. It also contains rosa damascana extract, and because of those two ingredients... Um, I decided not to purchase this product, especially since it's very, it's more expensive than any of these for a rinse off masks to be $56. I'd have to be really blown away with it. And I have a feeling I wouldn't be with some of those ingredients. So especially when you combine resurfacing ingredients with fragrance, it just, com it increases the likelihood of sensitivity or reaction. So anyway, that, those are my thoughts on the brand. Uh, it's pricey. Some people have really good luck with it. Um, yeah, so my favorite would probably be the, Ess the Essence, which is the one of the most expensive ones, but uh, everything here is pretty friendly for most skin types, except for very sensitive. So anyway, those are my thoughts. I'm interested in hearing from you guys. If you guys have a favorite from the line, and if so, what it is and what you like about it, or if you've tried the Rose Resurfacing Mask, uh, what your thoughts are on it. So uh, definitely leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. And stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Did you do them all? Yeah.